evening and welcome to another Happy Pod, a very classy podcast where we keep it classy and do classy things. My name is Nathan. As always, I'm joined with my co-host. His name is Lawrence Thomas Heisey. Hello. Hello. How are Literally you? no one gives a shit, Lawrence. Tell us what this silly little show is all about. You got fucking red. <laughs> Did you set the classy thing up just to do that? No. <laughs> then what was the classy thing Lawrence, about? Lawrence, no one cares. Oh, Fine. Right. Hello. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is a classy show where we do classy things uh, such as talk about pop culture things, movies, TV shows, some games. We try and keep things classy and have a positive vibe while doing so and avoiding negative Nelly nonsense discourse. That's what I say. What do you say to that? No, no, that sounded right. Well, yeah, I try to include your classy thing that you've I didn't know if you wanted to establish that going forward. Did you say what you usually say? Yeah, but in a roundabout way. It was a bit different. I took the scenic route round it, but... We got there. <laughs> I wasn't listening for being honest with you. So, so how are you criticising something you haven't listened to? Because it sounded different. Yeah, but that's because you weren't listening. <sighs> Maybe. Who's to, t- who's to say for sure? How are you today? Drunk. <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad for you. I have to I don't drink very often. Didn't think to keep any of your like skills or height senses heightened for this recording. No. <laughs> is, is this you? Is this your energy for the show? <laughs> Yeah, this is what you get. Fuck's sake. Okay, fine. Did you change this on the schedule? Were we always meant to be doing this? No, I changed it, yeah. I was sneaky. I thought you were a bit sneaky, but I figured yeah. I must have got it wrong. What was in its place? No idea. I can't remember. But <laughs> it, it really wasn't that important. <laughs> Fair, okay. Nothing, nothing of value. And I, like, I saw, full disclosure, I saw a clip on uh, the popular social media networking application TikTok um, from How to Train Your Dragon. And then I realised um, how much I enjoyed watching How to Train Your Dragon. Spoiler alert. So then I thought, I want to talk about How to Train Your Dragon. And I'm 94.73% certain mm. that you haven't seen it, or at least hadn't, <laughs> didn't know anything about it. And you, you have that, you know, like, bias... Where you're like, anything fun in kids movie, you're like, fucking, I would rather put seven bullets in my brain yeah. than watch a, a fun family movie. Um, So I thought I'd make you watch this. Well, yeah, so I hadn't seen it. <laughs> but... Have you seen it now? Yes, it'd be pretty useless We're to be turning up. to a good start. Yes, indeed we are. Yeah, no, I've seen it. Uh, it's good. I, I hadn't seen it before today. Uh, I do enjoy it. I feel, I... I I must be breaking out of this mindset that you've put me in by no, now. Like I've seen no. a lot more fun movies now. At gunpoint. No, right. I put Puss in Boots. I I enjoyed that more than you. I had more to say positively than you did about that movie, and that was DreamWorks as well. All right. Would you want a medal? I yeah. Can't rem- I can't remember watching that movie. I can. I enjoyed it. I don't want. I don't want a medal. I want to not be chastised. But here's. But that's. Like, I'll, I'll agree with your point for anything that came out after the year of our Lord 2021. Okay, fair fair point. All right. Yeah. <laughs> for anything before that, you cross your arms and go, no, <laughs> I haven't seen it and I'm not watching it because it's bad. I don't like how observant you are because that's quite accurate. <laughs> exactly. It's very accurate. <laughs> Uh, I was a different man back then. What can I say? Mm. And I had that bias ingrained into my head. I actually, saying that though, I I had nothing, no thoughts about this movie. I I was aware that people really enjoyed it, and I was just it's ju- it just was something I'd never seen. Why did you hate it then? In your mind, like one day we really will get this on t-shirts, <laughs> maybe. Um, but no, but like clearly there was something stopping you from watching it. Because you'd, you'd heard other people say it was good. But then, so what was it that made you think everyone else was wrong and you who hadn't seen it was right and it was bad? No, but I, no, I, right, because you're, you're coming from it <laughs> suggesting that I was like acting above it. I had no thoughts on it. Well, all right, so you had no, no head empty, no thoughts, no reaction, nothing. Just, I have no thoughts about this movie. I will never watch it. Yeah, no, but it wasn't like an, it wasn't like a refusal to watch it. It was just something that's like, I was aware people enjoyed it. I'd never got round to seeing it. It wasn't right. like I avoided it. I didn't oh. run out the door if someone put it on. Okay. It sounds like he was avoiding it. <laughs> it doesn't. Well, but if people are saying it's good, then what's the issue? Why are you like, well, I'm still not going to watch it. I raise you that point, the drama show, and you wanted to get into more dramas. Yeah. Succession. Everyone on the planet thinks it's a great show. First of all, that's not true, because I'm a person on the planet 
Okay, fine. <laughs> Okay. All right, so you're in a worse position then. You're actively saying I'm never going to watch it because I don't want to see it. No, I'm, no, I'm not. When, 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 at what point <laughs> have I said that? You said I'm a person you're just on the planet word... and I don't like it. Uh, first of all, I never said I don't like it. I just said I'm a person on the planet. Okay, fine. Yeah, I was going to say s- I haven't seen it, so I don't know. Hmm. Hmm. I've never said I won't watch it. In fact, I've actually said the opposite. I've said I will watch it. Um if you watch Attack on Titan. But we both know that is literally never going to happen. What? No, but now, all right, now you've swung it around to win the argument by bringing it to making me seem like a racist for some reason. (laughs) Well, I never said that. I I was in no way throwing around that accusation. Mm. And and that's not what I was saying at all. Mm, You seem pretty certain about my refusal to see that show in particular. Why? I don't know. You tell me. I, I was not making that accusation whatsoever. Okay. <laughs> okay. Fine. I'm just saying that you're literally never going to watch Attack on Titan because I know you and you're just not. Is that because it's something you suggested to me as well? Well, no, mostly because it's anime. Yeah. I mean, yeah, fair. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> it's not my jam. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. You say that. But the one anime thing that you have seen again which you were forced to watch at gunpoint for this podcast <laughs> you really enjoyed i did yeah i did so, so by the law of statistics and if we just look at this logically and in a scientific way and if we calculate that the thing that you have watched you enjoyed surely that would uh stand to reason that uh you would enjoy other things in a similar manner. You should be a fucking lawyer. You're so good at talking me into a corner. <laughs> but am I wrong, though? No. If at this very specific point you're making, you are not wrong. But I was, on that episode, I was I was vocal enough about, like, I find a lot of the style of anime takes me out of something. Why are we talking about anime? Yeah, but you still enjoyed it. I did enjoy it. So there you go. But it is it all to the quality of your name, Attack on Titan? Yes. Then maybe I'll watch it. <laughs> you won't. <laughs> Look, let's get yeah. let's get the elephant out of the room, or the elephant in the room acknowledged. Your dad is now a keen listener of the show. You, you might not listen to this one. Oh, why? Because I just don't think he cares about how strange you're joking. He'll only like listen to the episodes he cares about. If he is listening, hello, dad. Yeah, but I don't think he is. On the off chance he stopped by, nice to have you on board, Carl. Mm. <laughs> I've been seeing your thoughts and feelings about the show, and I'm very happy to have you as as my number one fan. Would that be accurate, Nathan? You're just, yeah, I noticed you're just quickly brushing over that whole discussion and putting that behind us. <laughs> no, 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 we don't, we don't need to acknowledge it. Maybe it'll be in the episode, maybe it won't be. <laughs> I think it should be. <laughs> How, Nathan, to train your dragon? I was still brushing past it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we are. Yeah, no, we, okay. we, we're getting onto it now. Right. Um, all right, so you saw it on, you saw the clip on TikTok. You really wanted to rewatch it. Um, was it just because you wanted me to see it, or did you actually like? Were you super keen to jump on it as well? If you have cut all that out, you're a coward. <laughs> and I'm making keep, it impossible. Yeah, and I will keep bringing it up. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> don't get it out because I will keep bringing it up. What did you say? <laughs> You're just waiting to get your zinger in there, were you? What did you say? I said you saw the clip of How to Train Your Dragon on TikTok. Um, did you just want me to watch it, or did you did you actually want to like revisit it and watch I it? I wanted to watch it. It's yeah. a good movie. I most recently rewatched it. I watched the whole trilogy, um, uh, like a little over a year ago, and really enjoyed them. Um, I'd seen them all before, obviously, but but yeah. Um, so and then I saw the clip on TikTok, and I just wanted to rewatch it, and then. Like I've already said, I just wanted to make you watch it as well and yeah. and see your thoughts on this thing that you hate. I liked it. It was good. Mm. Um, no, I, I said it last week. I'm on my like my journey of like trying to watch things that like they don't always have to be like about some <laughs> doom and gloom and miserable thing. Like I, I, I I'm. What I, are the themes? What is the yeah? What is the auto director trying to say with this French noir classic? <laughs> um, this two-hour silent movie about grapes in a jar or whatever. What is, what is it trying to say? <laughs> yeah, I've been I've been trying to get away from that <clears throat> reputation that you've you've so kindly built for me. Um, you built it for yourself. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I didn't build it for you. <laughs> I had a hand to play, but you've encouraged it. <laughs> Seriously, I've been. If anything, I've been trying to dispel it. 
I haven't encouraged it. Well, you did a good job today. I enjoyed this movie quite a lot. I think it's like, it's not, also like, I don't want to say it's about nothing because it's not. It's very much about stuff. It's just not on the it's surface. It's about a lot of stuff, yeah. Yeah. It's just not like, on the surface, it's not like, it's more, it's more fun than it is like trying to beat you over the head with a point. But the points are still there and it's a really nice movie with nice themes and messages. Um, yeah, but that's not a crime, Lawrence. I know. I, that's what I'm saying. Movies can be fun. I know. know. <laughs> uh, I enjoyed it. Um, yeah, I, th- I think this is this is good. I, I, I like the whole like the whole like kind of family theme, and it, the whole thing is about like relationships with people and like changing yourself or like changing the way you perceive something. It's very nice. It's it's very good. Why do you like this movie? Because it's good. And it's got good music, mm. and it's got uh, a cute dragon, and it's got... Um, I I enjoy this movie because it's very heartfelt. I think I really enjoy the message about change isn't a bad thing. Change is good, and if you embrace it, it can actually be uh, a really good thing and impact your life, your community, and all that sort of stuff for the better. Um, too often people can get stuck in their traditions, and which blinds themselves to... A lot of stuff around them, really. So I really like what this movie is saying uh, about all that stuff and opening yourself up to change uh, and experience in different ways of life in different communities and that sort of stuff. Mm. It's um, it's very interesting. No, I'd agree with that. Is this because I, I I don't have any knowledge in my head about like how this is. Like, I know it's a trilogy, I know there's three of them, but, like, I don't know, like, what the... Rece- I know that people like this one. Is, like, the, the other two, like, as well regarded? Like, is this... Yep, they're all great. They're okay. all great. They're all very well loved. Is this DreamWorks, like... Obviously, they're Shrek, but is, like... Is it their biggest hit since Shrek? Uh, maybe. I don't know, to be honest. What else have DreamWorks done recently? Boss Baby. What? <laughs> Is that Did they yet? do Boss Baby? Or was that Elimination? Oh, that's probably Elimination, isn't it? I don't know, to be honest. No, yeah, I, I think you're touching on some some cool stuff. The music, that was the one thing that stood out to me. Like, the music in this movie is really, really nice. Like, there's a couple of, like, nice points to it. Where, like, f- firstly, it, like, it weaves in this, like, medieval kind of, like, element to the score, which is really, really nice. But there's, like, great moments. A lot of the, like, the set pieces have really really good music underneath it and the as well as the, like the the romantic flying the first time that Astrid goes up on Toothless to fly um that's got some really nice music to it as well um yeah I, I, I'll be honest I wasn't expecting it to be like as well put together as it was I thought it'd be like a fun you know just a, a fun run-of-the-mill movie that people liked but yeah I think it's I think it's better than that I think it's good oh well there you are um next week <laughs> We're doing this. All right, I, I say I say one thing. We can talk about this. I didn't know Jay Burishell had it in him. Jay Baruchel. Is it not? Is it Baruchel? I don't know. I have no idea to be honest. I'm drunk. <laughs> so you just wanted to correct me. Yeah. Good. Yeah, he's good. He's very good in this. Yeah, he's fine. No, right. There are people in this that are just fine. He is yeah. a cut above them. I don't know if he's a cut above them. Do you think he's he's fine? He does what he needs to do. I think he does it quite well. I think the people that do what they need to do are Jonah Hill and the other one from Superbad. Yeah. Who's also the bad guy in Kick-Ass. Um, what's his name? McLovin. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, okay, yeah, I guess. No, they're like, they're the ones that stick out, right? They're the ones that, they're like, you just, firstly, their voices immediately are so recognisable that they, they took me out of anything their character said. I was just like... Yes, and Jay Baruchel famously has a voice which is not distinct at all and and can easily blend into a crowd. Yeah, but maybe it's just my viewing habits. I haven't seen much of his stuff outside of like that movie that they all did about being high when it was the world was ending or something. Like The world's end. No, not the world's end. This is the end. This is the end, that's the one. I, I think he does a good... I think he blends into it nicely. Also, like, his lines feel more natural than the others. The others, I feel like Jonah Hill got his sheet of lines and just went into a booth for an hour and recorded them and went home. Whereas he feels like he's actually, like, in the scene. I know he wasn't, like, mo-capping anything or anything to, like, acting it out. But, like, it feels more lived. It feels like he's actually giving a better performance. It just sounds like Jay Baruchel to me, if I'm being honest with you. Do you really think so? Yeah. <laughs> it was his voice. It's just Jay Baruchel's voice. He's not a voice actor. Sorry. But he gives a good job, doesn't he? He does a fine job. It's a bit... Ah. 
You know what I mean? I, I do see what you're saying. He's as we've spoken about like how Chris Pratt plays a good voice acting everyman. I give another you stupid reptile. Wow. Alright, that's that's like the one li- bad line delivery. <laughs> the rest of it was very natural <laughs> and good. I think was was good. So what, so does does he take you out of it then? Do you not like it because of No, it's fine. Yeah. I just it's it doesn't take me out of it. It's just I'm I'm very aware that this is a Viking community and you have, you know, Jerry Butler and yeah. and Craig Ferguson all doing good like Viking sounding performances. And then there's ah, mm. I I'm a Viking too. Ah. That, and work, that works for his character though. His character's not meant to be a tough Yeah, Viking. I know. His character's also a little bit weedy and and a bit of an outsider and stuff. Why are all the kids American and all the adults Scottish? I don't know. Maybe that's what happens in this Viking community. Once you grow to a certain age, you just become Scottish, I guess. <laughs> you grow a big beard and become Scottish all of a sudden. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. That sounds. Jerry like... Butler does a great performance. He does do a good performance. He's called Stoic because Stoic. he's a big Stoic Viking. I liked um, that whole like side thing of like we give them ugly names to scare away like <laughs> any aggressors or something. Yeah. <laughs> Which does make sense. Yeah, no, he's he gives a good... I think they work well together. I think Jay Burechel, Bar- Barishel, whatever his surname is. Barishel. Uh, Barishel. <laughs> Again, do you know that? <laughs> well, just looking at how it's spelled. Let's not forget you're the man who used to say Johan Phoenix. Right, don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> Am I wrong? Is that on this podcast? Was that where no, that it's discovery? not. That was just in real life that we had that. <sighs> okay, good. Long well, before this podcast as well. <laughs> no, no, I think I think they, they, they give good performances together. Um, I think they've got a nice like father-son dynamic. That's like the one of the main kind of core things propping up the movie in itself, that relationship, which I really, really enjoy. There's there's a I think there's a nice like parallel between um Toothless and um uh stoic like there's something i don't know there's something nice to be said like about the how like it's a story about relationship and like relationships in general and being like receptive in a relationship like like you said earlier like changing for the better is growth but then also like his stoic is very like adamant about trying to change um hiccup to mold like what he thinks is is going to be more better suited and like trying to change someone else is not the same as that person showing you who they really are and growing themselves if that makes sense why is that similar to toothless because there's like the relationship with toothless is very much a case of like they couldn't be more different right one is literally a dragon the other one is just like some viking kid right and that there's 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 the parallel there between like stoic and the whole point of their like father son dynamic is that he is not growing to be what he wants him to be. His son is too different for him to connect with. He doesn't have like a bond or anything to talk uh, to his son about because they have nothing in common. Uh, but how like how Hiccup relates to Toothless is because they're so different and they connect with each other because they accept their differences. Whereas it takes Stoic a bit longer to get round to that. At first, he's just instead like trying to mold Hiccup to be something that he's never gonna be, which. Yeah, I don't know. I just think it's a yeah, nice little nice little parallel. I like Toothless. Toothless is a, a very fun little dragon. Did you watch this with your wife? I did. Has she seen it? Uh she'd seen it but not f- since it came out in cinema, so she wasn't yeah. too familiar with it. She enjoyed it? Yeah, she she liked it. Yeah. I um <laughs> at one point we we paused it to debate something and I want to get your take on it. This is not to diminish Toothless in any way, but he's not cute. <laughs> I knew this was going to open a can of worms because he's he's not cute. He's good. And he's a great character, a great dragon, but he's not cute. Ha 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 ha! What <laughs> the fuck <laughs> have you snorted? <laughs> Are you insane? He's not cute. He's, he's just how a- the fuck <laughs> can you watch this movie, <laughs> you heartless bastard? And say Toothless is... um, uh, The point I was going to go down before you interrupted with this (laughs) fucking Oppenheimer-level bombshell, Yeah. okay, the point I was going to make is Toothless is modelled very clearly after a cat, a little black cat, Yeah. okay? And we spoke last week, how unfortunately recently 
you lost your little fella, yeah. Jarvis. I was going to see if it brought up any memories, emotions <laughs> of that cute little guy. But apparently not. Apparently you fucking hated him. <laughs> I did not. I genuinely, I, I could see that he was like cat-like in his modeling, but it didn't evoke anything for me. Why like, do you not? All right. So I'm assuming your wife thought he was cute. If this, if you had a debate. Yes. About, okay. Which we and did. she's right. <laughs> Because he is. But so so what's your argument here? And this is why I want to stress, like it's not You fucking moron. It's no, Let's it's not a off. knock on the character in any capacity, right? Toothless is very capable, very cool. I like Toothless a lot. I like their friendship. I think their relationship is very cute. And like how they grow to be more friendly and then by the end Toothless is ready to like just go deep into battle to protect him. I love all of that. That's all very cute. But the physical appearance of Toothless is like slimy and scaly. Cool, but not cute. I wouldn't want to cuddle Toothless. It'd just be hard and bony. So are you saying that he does have cute mannerisms and he has a cute personality? But <laughs> you've been a lawyer again. You're not going to get but me around No, no, no. This. Fuck off. I'm talking. <laughs> so, so I just want to clarify here. So you're saying he does have cute characteristics and a personality, but he's physically repulsive. Stop it. <laughs> No, I just, I just want to clarify. Um, all right, yes, and it, right, fine, yes. You're, you're so wrong. You're so wrong. Okay, <laughs> first of all, he, he does have very cute characteristics and, and mm-hmm. personality. And like I say, he's modelled after a cat. He does the little thing where he like he chases a little light around, like a little laser on the ground and stuff. It's all very adorable. Yeah. Um, he's, he's got a great personality and it is very cute. First of all, just because he's a reptile, that doesn't disbar him from being cute. He doesn't look wet and slimy at all. I think he does. Okay. Snakes can be incredibly cute and adorable. Crocodiles, alligators can be very cute and adorable. I would happily cuddle an alligator. I know it's not a good idea. (laughs) I know I'll probably die. (laughs) But, like, I'd still do it. I don't think... I probably wouldn't. But, like, I'd like to do it if it was safe. I'll take your point on snakes. I don't think alligators and crocodiles are cute. Follow Gators Daily on Twitter and then <laughs> and then tell me I'm wrong. Okay. I feel like this would be more of a popular opinion. No, you are, you are going to get fucking cooked for this, mate. <laughs> but it's just Absolutely. not cute. I, I don't know how you can look at He's got the big eyes and everything. He's very cute. You're making it seem like he's wet and gross and he's got like fucking phlegm hanging off him all the time and I, stuff. He's I don't very, think he's gross. I don't. He's think a he's... handsome little boy. And he's ta- very cute. I'll do handsome. I'll take handsome. I don't think so when I'm saying, saying he's saying? cute, I'm not saying he's I'm not when I say he's not cute, I'm not saying he's gross or disgusting. So what are you saying? I'm just saying he doesn't fall into cute. I don't look at him and go, ah. I do when he like curls up a little bit or like does something so that's that, cute. Yeah, that's cute. No, how but do, right, just, how does that disbar him from being cute then? Because just him in general isn't cute. Like he doesn't Why? I don't I don't I can't explain it. It's just that feeling you get. Prejudice. No, no, what? Yes. No. <laughs> yes, that's what it is. In what way is it prejudice? An inherent disdain for anything different. Oh, give off. <laughs> well, that's what it sounds like to me. No, not in the slightest. I just don't think he's cute. You're so, you're so fucking <laughs> stupid and so wrong. That that's that's the worst opinion you've ever had on this podcast. <laughs> And you said some dumb shit, but that is by far the worst. I don't know. I think there's something. I think there's something odd about adults that are p- putting up pitchforks to fight me on the cuteness of a dragon. Is- I think there's something odd about a man who can't accept that a family film, primarily aimed at children, has adopted a, a cute and likable design for a dragon, and have purposefully made it seem likable and cute and adorable likable absolutely don't think he's cute i just don't see it and i'm not i'm not saying people that do it weird i'm just saying i don't you just said that it's a bit weird no the people like if anyone on twitter comes at me and starts saying they should why why don't you that's weird i think that's weird no i think they're right to do that (laughs) fine (laughs) all right let's (laughs) i encourage everyone listening to this right now to actively send you hate. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Yeah. 
Oh, that's harder to do over Twitter now. Haven't they like blocked DM requests or something? Well, they can write a letter if they need to. They can, oh yeah, that's fair. They can 18... do. 18. No. <laughs> it's my real address. Oh no. <laughs> what do you love about this movie? I just said. Tell me more. We've got more time to fill. Toothless. Okay. I like that he's cute. Okay. I don't. <laughs> that's fine. No, tell me, tell me more. Tell me, tell me why this this spoke to you. What is it about this particular movie that you really enjoy? I don't know. It's good. <laughs> Nathan, it's a podcast. You got to fucking talk. I like the relationship between Stoic and um, Hiccup. Um, I like I like the way it grows and evolves, and Stoic um, does see that he was right. First, it's very hard to watch at some point. The moment where like Toothless comes and saves uh, Hiccup after he's like. Uh, getting attacked by the dragon and then everyone just starts like fucking jumping toothless very difficult to watch very painful you was probably cheering you was probably <laughs> fucking like yes lads let's go uh me um and the rest of the normal people mm. were, were quite upset by that um but, it, but it's good to see how um gerard butler's character grows from that and he is someone who all his life he's been against dragons and he's seen them as one thing and one thing only and there's no room for change. Um, but because his son is different and because he he clearly loves his son but he struggles with expressing that. He's he's a Viking, yeah. isn't he? He's big, he's stoic, he's I'll fucking cleave your head open, can that's what I do for a living. Um <laughs> so so he's obviously gonna struggle with like the more personal stuff and you see that in the movie there's even like a scene where like oh because he, he thinks that like hiccup is like this big like dragon killer now or whatever he's like oh we got so much to talk about and then it's just like awkward silence for a good like 30 seconds where they're just like uh so <laughs> i've got yeah i wrote a note on that like that scene and it's like it's it, what you're saying is right because it's it i think it would be so easy and why why i think this is kind of like it has a lot to say in like acceptance and relationships and stuff in general and how two people can be different but find common ground like it would be quite easy to write him into a a typical or, or like kind of one note character what like one dimensional character which is just it, vikings you, if you don't live like us then you're wrong like it would be they do that but they they there's an undercurrent of he really wants to connect with his son. He just doesn't know how. And it's just like, I wish the, like the default is that he's so strong and tough. That he's just like, I wish you could just be more like me and then I'd know what to do. And obviously that's not, <laughs> that's not healthy <laughs> in any capacity. Um, but yeah, you're right. That like that, that scene where he's like, oh, I can't wait now. We, we've got loads to talk about. We, you know, we'll, we'll do this in the morning. And then it's still like, he's like, okay, I'm kind of tired. And he's like, okay, well, I've, I guess off to bed we go and it's still awkward and it doesn't, it's still not right between them. And that's because they haven't, he hasn't done the whole arc yet. He hasn't found a middle ground, which I do think you get a uh, hiccup at the end still like rides off and like he's still putting himself, making his dad proud by putting himself in harm's way and being a, a warrior to a degree. It's just that he's learned to find he a bit more He does it in a different way. He does it. Yeah. He, he becomes... Like, Hiccup does prove himself and does become, like, quite a fuck. He, he's the one who fucking stops a big fucking dragon cunt. Yeah. Um, um, and he does become, like, what his dad wanted him, but he does it in his own way. He does it with kindness and compassion and that sort of stuff. And I'm a soppy cunt, so I love all that sort of stuff. <laughs> but, um, you probably hate it, but, no. but for me, it's a good time. No, but there's, there's a niceness to that as well, because it also shows everyone at the same time that, like, it's not undermining, it's not dad's wrong it's just that there are other ways to do what you want me to do oh no dad is wrong oh no the dad is wrong but the dad learns to not be wrong at the end <laughs> like yeah um yeah it's 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 yeah i don't know it's nice i get like i don't know obviously this is there's stuff that i'm not qualified to talk about but there's obvious like how dads can react to any form of like other anything that doesn't fit their norm or their grain like i don't know i think there's some kind of, I don't know what the word for it would be. I did know what you were trying to say. I just wanted, oh, you just to, wanted to see me it, word yeah. around it, oh, yeah. Good. I, wanted, I was interested to see how you would do it. Yeah. Well, no, but like, that, I think that is what it's saying. All right, go on then. Well, no, but just like, kind of nothing else to elaborate on beyond what we've already spoken about. Just the dad 
adamantly refusing to see another way and how the... And you think that's good? No, I, where did I ever say that? I'm just fucking with you. Stop it! You're trying to you're trying to make me racist and homophobic this episode. You do that one by yourself. Fine. You don't need my help for that. Well, I think that I do need your help for I don't know. I don't know what I'm arguing there. Um, Jonah Hill and TJ... You're obsessed with Jonah Hill. And TJ Miller and the other one, McLovin. Yes. Every single time they spoke, I just couldn't get past who they were. It all... That's me with Jay Baruchel. Really? Yeah, because he's got such a distinctive voice. But you know, because like, it's Jay Baruchel. Can you not get past his voice? Though? Like I know Chris Pratt is Emmett, but I still watch the Lego Movie and go, "That's Emmett, not Chris Pratt." No, because he's not using Chris Pratt's voice. He's not like, "Hello, it's me, Chris Pratt." He's doing a good voice actor voice. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I guess. All right, well, Jay but- Baruchel. If you watch an interview with Jay Baruchel, he'll sound exactly like Hiccup, because he is. Maybe I get maybe his character just suits that more, and like I think he looks like his voice looks like it would should come out of his character design. Like, yeah, that's fair. Whereas like Jonah Hill has like got this weird voice, and it's coming out of like this nerd type, and I'm like still supposed to believe that he's the one that like. Jonah wants... Hill's not the nerd. Which one's the oh? Is that T.J. McLovin. Miller? McLovin. No, McLovin was the nerd. McLovin's the nerd. So you don't even know. Oh, it's what the. <laughs> I closed my eyes and pretended they weren't talking. <laughs> Your whole point just fell apart. No, I destroyed my point, you with facts and logic. My point still stands that I find I found them three incredibly distracting. You also hated America Ferrara as Astrid. I didn't know it was her for the longest part because she's doing a different voice to a degree. It's still yeah, no, it's 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 America Ferrara esque, but it's not like she's doing something different. She's not just being America Ferrara. But yeah, I I looked I looked up the cast when I could, I just couldn't for the life of me work out who the dad was, and then I was like, oh yes, of course, it's, it's Gerard Butler. Yeah, of course, it's Big Jerry. I think most of the stuff that I took away from the movie was that kind of meaning behind like the the family and the relationships and the dynamic and the changing and how it how they come together at the end, but they can't find a way to connect at the start. But I don't know. Do you think it's saying anything else? Do you think there's any like other thematic points to discuss i think it's saying um it's a good movie that's what i think it's saying and i think it's saying it's got a good soundtrack and i think it's uh it is like i've already touched upon it is it embraces uh change and adopting new ways of life and maybe if you know your son does want to do something different um and it's not necessarily what you expected of him that's okay he can still be a good person and can still contribute to the community i also like that uh hiccup loses his leg at the end it's it's kind of weird to say but it's kind of sweet in that it just um makes him all, all the more like first of all like toothless they're both disabled now mm. um and it's just another way for them to bond together really yeah no i i, I like that yeah no I, I never really considered that to be fair because he is toothless yeah got a broken was that is a tail broken tail wing thing yeah his tail fin I do. Um, I like the animation wise. I think some of the like the designs of the dragons are really interesting. Like, obviously, <laughs> let's not let's not start on Toothless again. We've spoken about his design far too much. He's great. He's very cute. It is. It's a good design. That's why I, I did say that earlier. Even though I don't find him cute, I think it's presented well and looks good. Um, I like the other dragons. There are some that are a bit more like. I like that when you see him in the first kind of opening, um, the opening kind of sequence where. Um, we're getting the rundown about the dragons always hunting them and the the kind of ongoing conflict between the Vikings and the dragons. They all seem way more menacing than they actually are when we get to see them up close later on. And like a lot of them are quite goofy and a bit silly, um, but mostly just kind of like, they, obviously they are harm. They, they can deal out harm, but a lot of them seem harmless. <laughs> like when they get like a scratch on the neck, like a dog or something, they would just like mm. fall into your arms instead of try to kill you or whatever. Um, so I think that's done really, really nicely. There's a good variety mm. uh, among them. They're all, they're not just like what you would, what you would imagine like a standard run in the mill dragon. Like, Game of Thrones kind of does. It's yeah. It's they're all they're all different. They have unique designs and fun like um, quirks and abilities and stuff. It's it's all quite interesting. Yeah, yeah. It's quite well done. What do you? Yeah. I I know that I've I've seen some people mention this and stuff before. Like DreamWorks 
a lot of the time, I think they fall into like some. Uh, they've moved out of it more so recently. Uh, but when did when did this come out? <sighs> 2010, I want to say. Okay, because they like. I feel like this might have been a point for DreamWorks where they were very much stuck in the whole like. You know how Pixar got their house style down, and they went, "We'll never deviate from this again." Mm. Like we, I think we spoke about it in the Encanto episode. Like every single human being across the Pixar span of work right now just is the same when and it doesn't always take animation to its like full kind of capacity and what it's what it's capable of um and like the beauty of animation is you can literally create anything on the screen and like movies like spider-verse have been so good at kind of moving away from that and and breaking that norm and um yeah i think this this finds it's this is very much like it's not doesn't really have it it has its own style but it's very much the dreamwork style of the era but i do think that the quality of the animation is polished more so than other stuff like what like there's there's sequences where like you can look into there's like close-ups of Toothless's face where like no, but like was it more polished though? Uh, well, obviously there's the time stuff, but like like other what's what's the other stuff of the era? Like not what, when was like the last? Oh, like Puss in Boots, the first one that was like 2011, I want to say, and that's very much like it, it's it's good, but it's it doesn't go beyond what it is. Like it's still very like corners. And this sounds nasty about animators because I'm sure they had their own time restraints and stuff. But like, it doesn't push it further. Where I think that like this film does. Like, there are shots where you can see like the reflection of some mountains in like Toothless's eye, for example, which is like that attention to detail is really really nice. The flying sequence, like, it looks stunning. Um, and from like a lighting perspective as well, it just it all looks really really nice. Where I think not lesser movies, but movies that pay less attention to that detail could, it could easily just be like, oh, it's a dragon flying and there's some clouds and it it looks okay. It looks like a dragon flying. Whereas this, there's some really like cinematic shots in here that just are really, really nice to look at. Like I get the feeling you could get this movie as a file and kind of like put your cursor anywhere to stop it. And it would probably look quite nice and better than a lot of stuff. It, it holds up. I mean, like if it was over a decade ago, it looks good for today's standards. It can't always be said about stuff that is, uh, like I said, especially over 10 years old. Uh, that's it, I reckon. That's about it. Yeah. I've not got much else to say on it, to be fair. I like it. It's a good movie. Cracking. Well, Lawrence hated How to Train Your Dragon. We'll see how he enjoys How to Train Your Dragon 2 whenever we do that. <laughs> whenever we get around to it. Uh, probably next year, because this year is completely full up. Um, <laughs> although I did delete something for this. so. What know. did you... It's bothering me. What did you delete? I think it was Stand By Me. Right. Oh, I wanted to do Stand By Me. We can do Stand By Me. We'll put it in place of Oppenheimer. Um, so... (laughs) (laughs) I want to do Oppenheimer. No, you want to do Stand By Me. You said. (laughs) Fuck you. Um, Recommendations, Lawrence. What is recommendations? Recommendations, Nathan, is the part of the show where we just take a minute to tell you something we've checked out recently or discovered or started watching reading looking drinking. at experiencing drinking drinking <laughs> is that for today we'll see <laughs> well we'll see right now nathan what would you like to recommend i went first last week boom flipped you know <laughs> Uno reverse. uh i would recommend um oh i'll tell you what i've done um i bought a book zoo <laughs> <laughs> what i bought a zoo did you say <laughs> <laughs> I fucking got him. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> what did that do? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck say. <laughs> you deeply need to go to bed tonight. <laughs> yeah. I even half 10. I know. Any sourced, outrageous behaviour. You could have given me fair warning. I'm drinking Diet Coke. Well, sounds like a you problem. Yeah, but I would have joined. Uh, do you know what? One one time to this podcast, I brought a whiskey and you got annoyed because <laughs> you didn't tell me in enough, tell you in enough time so that you could get a whiskey. And now I find out you've drunk a whole bottle of wine and not invited me to join in on the festivities. Yeah, revenge. No, not it does not equal to that <laughs> at all. Mm. Nathan, this week I have... It is no secret and it is no 
um, I, I can be quite annoying about this topic. Um, so <laughs> I am a big fan of the telly show Succession. You already recommended Succession. I'm not recommending Succession. You can't recommend it again, you fuckhead. I can because it is now in book form. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> I like the story a lot. One thing, my favourite thing about the show is the writing of the show. I think it's very good, but I'm also I'm also aware that on the, it's a show that is heavily improvised at certain moments. A lot of scenes go off into different things and become something else, and they very much find scenes on the day as opposed to obey the script strictly. I'd just like to point out I'm not going to listen to any of this. I'm on Twitter. <laughs> You're fun today. You're real fun to record with today. <laughs> so... What I enjoy about this book um, is it's written by Jesse Armstrong. Obviously, all the scripts were, um, or most of them anyway. Um, and I think it's it's a good insight as to like how, you know, a lot of the time people write scripts and they're like, oh, it has to be done this way. And it, or, yeah, you have to format it this correctly. It's very much thrown together, which is crazy to say about one of the like most well-received shows that was recently on telly. Um, it's a good script book. Um, and it has a lot of character insight, a lot of moments that the actors do convey well enough in the show, but just gives you what the writers were, um, their kind of their interpretation and how they wanted it to come across. Um, good book. Um, also, just a fun way to experience the story, and also something that has enabled me to take time away from my phone and my laptop. And I am a bad reader in general. So this is my way into trying to read more, is to basically be like, what's my favourite thing to watch? I'll try and read that, and then I'll try and move on to read something else in the future and see how that, how, see how that takes me. Nathan, you have to listen to me now because it's your go. Uh, this week, Lawrence, I am, did you recommend your silly little book? No. Did you think I just sat here in silence for the last minute or so? Uh, you genuinely could. I would not be able to tell you any different, mate. <laughs> Get For out. all I know, you did. Yes, so. I did. I recommended my mm. book. Great. Did you enjoy it? I did enjoy it. I don't care. Um, so this week, I am going to recommend uh, a nice little YouTube video, which I think is quite cute uh, and brings me comfort sometimes. And it's slightly sort of relevant. Not really, though. Um, I think it was 2015. David Tennant won a special recognition national TV award. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I watched this uh, the other day. <laughs> you did? Okay, so there you go. Um, it's a good video. It is. Um, he, he won a special recognition national TV just for his contribution to British TV in general because he's, he's done a lot of great stuff over the years. Um, he didn't know he was going to win this award. And there's a video you can uh, look up on YouTube just basically seeing his reaction to the whole thing because they play like a whole video montage. And his dad's in it, uh, Catherine Tate, Olivia Coleman, um, And it's just a very, very sweet and very heartfelt reaction. And just the look on his face as he realizes <laughs> it's about him. It's it's so adorable and it's so sweet. It's, uh, it's cute, because it's, doesn't it start off with, like, a clip of Broadchurch, and he's, like, his first thought is obviously, like, oh, which of my co-stars has got this nice yeah. video about them? <laughs> yeah, and then when it slowly dawns on him that it's him, and, and Georgia sat next to him, and she's, like, got tears in her eyes and everything. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just very cute, so just go look that up, watch that if you just want to have, like feel some emotions. Play, play a fun game where you can try and spot David Tennant's dad uh, in the video. <laughs> Spoiler alert, it's David Tennant's voice, but a bit yeah. older. Yeah, it's the old Scottish man. Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah. And his, his dad uh, sadly died like, not long after that as well. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, that's yeah. made it so much sadder. Yeah, exactly. Uh, his dad passed away um, not too long after that as well. So, oh, all the no. More emotional. Yeah. At least we'll always have that video, eh? Yeah, yeah. It's a good video. It is yeah. a very good so. video. That's a good recommendation. Yeah, better than your silly little fucking capitalism book or you whatever. You wouldn't know. You didn't. It's a fucking, the whole show is anti-capitalist, Nathan. I hate you. I, Stop I it. I wouldn't know. You love the Murdochs. Um, <laughs> this podcast comes out every Friday at 10 a.m. <laughs> Are you doing it today? <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> um, um, and next week, we are doing this. Hope may feel beyond her grasp. But I think we finally found somewhere the Empire can't reach us. 
Imagine. No more looking over your shoulder. A place that's worth fighting for. No matter the cost. Are we? Yeah, yeah, we are. Okay. I, I, I made... <laughs> I'll leave this in. Um, I made some... <laughs> I made some progression this week. Not a lot, but I got I broke the back. I got back into it. Okay. And I realized my enjoyment of the game largely stems from the fact that I was playing on a quite a hard difficulty. I think the second hardest. You always do that. I know. You have this you, you're like you, it's this weird testosterone thing that you do and you're like, "No, I got to play the hardest setting possible to prove that I'm good." No, no, I think and like, there are some that I do. Like I I like it with The Last of Us because it gives you less ammo and like you have to play the game in a different way. Hate in, it. In this, in this game, the story diff the difficulty in levels is basically just lightsabers deal more damage. You don't get enough ammo in the Last of Us on like fucking regular mode anyway, but that's why so, it's like, so good because like you get like two good. bullets. Having two bullets on grounded is like you're like oh yeah I got two bullets a real treat. Do you know if if I'm playing a video game and then there's a sequence where I die over and over and over again because it's too difficult, I'm not having a good time. That's, that's where I was at with me. Jedi Survivor. <laughs> I kept I kept dying lower the, the difficulty then I, I did and I got like there was this you know that boss where like the the your 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 res you're researching Tanalor on Koba I want to say it Kobo. Is. yeah and I'm um, Kobo Koba Koba oh, I was right yay um and the the floor as you're like walking towards where you need to go the floor yeah. kind of goes opens up and you fall into a like a death pit yeah. With this big thing. I died so many fucking times. I just switched it to story mode and just obliterated him. And I've never felt better. Was like, it a big frog? Yeah, it was a bit big frog-esque. Yeah. Spawn of Ogdo. Yeah. That's completely optional. <laughs> that's Are you thing. taking the piss? No, that's that's yeah, that's yeah, completely optional. <laughs> you can avoid that completely if you want. <laughs> we have another podcast as well, Nathan, don't we? <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that. I am anyway. severely fucked off now. <laughs> Oh. Well, maybe you should play it more than like half an hour every two months. So <laughs> it's true. It's fair. It's a yeah. fair point. Yeah. Um, we do have another podcast, Lawrence. Why don't you tell me about it? Oh, I'm drunk. We are. It's a different ordering this week. Uh, our other podcast, Nathan, is about <coughs> Doctor Who. It's called Still Got Legs. It's a Doctor Who rewatch podcast. David Tennant's in Doctor Who. He is, and we've mentioned him twice in this episode. Um. So yeah, if you want to get your David Tennant fix, come along. We're on season three of Doctor Who. Um, we're hoping that there's a new era of Doctor Who coming, so we're hoping that a lot of people are jumping, either joining the show or like going back and, as me and Nathan are re-watching the show, um, in preparation for the 60th and the return of Russell T Davies. Uh, we as... won't finish it before. No, no, we're not even going to be close. Um, no. But we are having a good time going through it all, uh, and... We're re-experiencing the show, finding a lot more depth and nuance that we maybe not maybe missed, but definitely that we've we haven't had a chance to speak about before. Um, I also want to recommend the latest trailer for Ahsoka because it made me cry. Made you cry? Which, yeah. Can you link it to me? Because aren't there like a few? There's like TV spots coming out right now as well. Yeah, I can link it to you right now. Lovely stuff. Um, I did hear that there was. Well, is is it a spoiler that someone is in it? It's it's. Kind of, so, but that's why it made me cry. Okay, fair. Um, yeah, cool. Doctor Who's good time. Uh, that show comes out every single Monday at ten a.m. So get involved, get amongst it. Maybe start from the beginning, or just join us along the way. Who cares? Ultimately, uh, is what I will say. Um, I care. They can review us as well, Nathan, for this show. This is real weird. I don't like this back and forth that we've got in a different order this week. Yeah, you just finish it. I'm too drunk. All right. <laughs> Uh, you can give us a review as well for this show if you enjoyed the show even if you didn't give us five stars you'd never have to come back again but just give five stars on the way out the door that would be much appreciated uh, don't know what it does probably pushes us out to some capacity but do it it's nice and we will be eternally grateful like those green aliens in Toy Story um, we already know what we're doing next week and we spoke about it for a bit as well thank you Nathan <laughs> Uh, see you next Friday at 10am Wahoo uh, Say hi to your mum for me That's my line Yeah but you told me to do it all